Welcome. Hi, I'm Halcyon, and this is another Hug Nation broadcast. This is another belief buffet, another exploration of some idea that is going through my head, some part of my journey, something that I am working through or excited about that I share with the hopes that perhaps it has some value to you. Or maybe I'm just sharing it because I need to hear it myself. So trigger warning, um, I may delve into some areas of um, uh, deeper emotions. I may discuss uh, suicide, so trigger warning if uh, discussions of suicide attempts um, is going to be bothersome, you might want to turn this off. Um, also, I am not suicidal in this moment, so don't read the word suicide or hear me say the word suicide and, and get concerned, but I do want to speak openly and frankly, and that's a part of my story. So, I wanted to call this, I am broken and I am magnificent. I have a list of I am statements that I try to read every morning. That's part of the coaching I do is to people to put together kind of a personal manifesto of the statements that help you remind yourself each morning of who you are and who you want to be and who you are at your best. And this week I added I am broken and I am magnificent because it is so critical to remember that it's not either or that all of us are in a state of being teacher and student, of being humbled and triumphant. And it is a, a, you rob the world when you focus too much on your brokenness and don't allow your gifts to be shared with the world. So what am I talking about? Well. I consider myself to be incredibly privileged. I don't consider, it's fact. You know, I am biologically, culturally advantaged. My parents are still together. You know, I was well loved, well taken care of. I had art supplies as all I could eat growing up. I was able to attend whatever college that I could get into. I just, you know, I, I, I in, in so many ways, I have not suffered. And I, I've had incredible advantages. I mean, like, because of where I was in the world, like, I was able to discover the internet 10 years before almost everyone else. I discovered Burning Man at least 10 years before anyone else. I discovered Alan Watts. 10 years before most people I know. And so I had this like huge advantage in personal growth. And I felt that was a responsibility. I, I, I feel like the last 20 years or so, I have felt an obligation, a responsibility, a, 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 a proud duty to be of service in the ways that I could share what I have learned and what I know also anchored in humility, knowing that I'm still a student and I still have so far to go. But I've been very resistant to any discussion about my traumas. Because what the hell do I have to, to complain about? And so I've gone through, you know, weekend retreats, things like the Landmark Forum and and often they will like, you know, really try to focus on this, like, what are the one or two traumatic incidents of your childhood? And I could never really think of anything. And I didn't know if that's because my memory is so bad. It is. I have a bad memory. I know that I, I shouldn't say that out loud. I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak that into, into truth. <sighs> okay. I have a good memory. I just can't access it. I just don't, I don't have, I just don't have it. It's not there. I, you might be able to talk me back, or I could might see pictures that might spark the memory, but I just, I'm, my window of awareness is very close to now. I'm okay with that. 
for the most part. So why, so what possibly could have happened in my youth that would have caused any sort of trauma? And, and as I am turning 50 this year, and I'm really trying to do as much inner work as possible, I'm trying to figure out what, you know, why do I still have so much anxiety? Why do I still struggle with addiction to food, to substances, to internet? Why, why with all my advantages and all everything perfect, why do I still struggle? And, and so I started getting uh, feedback from my multiple coaches, um, and friends, and so I started looking into trauma uh, and some of the work of Gabor Mate and looking into attachment theory and was suggested by my coach and my partner that I should investigate into an avoidant attachment style and see how that resonates. And I hate, it's a strong word, but I really dislike being categorized according to some label. You know, like, oh, you're a Gemini. Oh, that makes sense. I'm like, ah, I hate, I do not like being put into a box because of my birth or some connection of letters or numbers. Oh, your Enneagram is eight. Well, that explains this. Like, really? Is it so simple? And so I've been very resistant to that. And so the idea of like, oh, I fall into this category. Besides, I had a perfect life. Why would I have any sort of issues? But as I did some investigation into um, avoidant attachment, um, it really like hit. And a couple things happened as I started learning more. One was that um, I saw that aspects of who I am that I had worn like a badge could have been the result of something unresolved. For example, my independence. I have loved the fact that I am a maverick. I am on my own. I am do things by myself. But as I look at my life and my relationships, how much have I pushed away people that wanted to be close to me? How much have I resisted working with a team? How much opportunity for real depth have I ran from? And the answer is a lot. You know, I'm approaching 50 and I've never even been close to being married. Thank whatever, especially Amy, for being the biological mother of my sperm donor seed so that it, I get these little pieces of what family life might be like. Not family life, but you know, being having offspring. Because my trauma, my avoidance, makes the concept of being responsible for a child just out of the question. And as I'm getting older, I'm realizing, wait, that's not as awesome as I thought it was. It's not black and white. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for the path that I've been on. I'm grateful for the way it took me, the adventures I've had, the opportunities that people I've met. It's just like win, win, win. I'm so grateful. But now maybe it's time for me to go, yes, and. Yes, and is it possible that you could be better? Yes, and is it possible that there is trauma that is holding you back from your deepest expression and your deepest connection and your deepest contribution? And honestly, it is so, it was so hard for me to even entertain the thought, like how dare I think that I may have had something happen in my childhood that wasn't anything but perfect. How dare I? Like, I have not been beaten. I have not been molested. Like, how dare I complain? 
But the more I thought about things, the more I like tried to remember back, and it was so hard for me. And I, the more that I would like sit with my anxiety, because I have had anxiety for a long time. I had 10 years where I was medicated. I'm not medicated now, but I'm considering. I've, I've, I've got a bottle of medication in the cabinet that I asked the doctor for that I have not been taking, but I could because sometimes I go, I don't know if I can do this. But as I sat in the anxiety and, and, and the unease, I have accessed little pieces of memory of my youth. And I want to try to explain this as, as best as I can. And let me preface it by saying, my parents are awesome. And I had, I sat down with my mom last week to talk about this stuff. And I'm so grateful for her courage and her honesty. And I, I, what I said to her is, there's nothing wrong that happened in my childhood. I'm not angry about anything. I'm not judging anything. I don't wish anything was different. I'm simply trying to understand better what happened so that I can better process and potentially resolve. My parents loved me very much and they did the best they could. But that doesn't mean that for no fault of their own that I may not have had experiences that caused me pain and trauma. And so when I talked to my mom, and it was so hard because I, I you know, like I love her so much. She is such an incredible person. And my dad is such an incredible person. But the thing is, no matter what, you will create shit for your kids. It's just the way it works. And so trying to understand what that shit is, is not a condemnation of my parents or your anything. It's just a trying to understand what were the conditions that created this. And so as I talked to my mom, I knew that I went into therapy when I was about 13 because I had talked about suicide. What I didn't remember was that I was caught mid-suicide attempt. I had a robe uh, belt tied around my neck and then I had tied it around to a bat and I was twisting it, twisting it, twisting it, twisting trying to choke myself out. Um, I don't even know if that's an, a legitimate way to kill yourself, but I was trying to hurt myself and I was trying to make it end. And I don't I don't remember that. I remember being told about it. I have vague memories of trying to return to that in therapy and, and just like that, that, that blackness, that, that, that feeling of like, I cannot, I cannot go there again. I cannot. And my mom told me things like she said, when we found you that way, we asked you, do you need help? And you said, in no uncertain terms, yes, I need help. And then we said, my parents said, you know, how, what kind of urgency do you feel like? Can we make an appointment tomorrow? And I said, I need help right now. And my mom, and the way she told me it, and the way I, I was like, she was like, you are hurting, you know, in a, in a, in a way that we'd never seen before. And so it's it's a it's a bizarre thing to know like I don't really remember but this awareness that at 13 I felt so much pain that I was telling my parents like please help me please help me and I so it, it's a crazy thing that I'm going through right now of going like is it true? 
that I had every advantage and every privilege? Yes. Is it also true that maybe I felt a level of pain and a level of trauma that affected me for the rest of my life? Yeah, that's also true. And it isn't to, this isn't, we're not playing a, a no competitive trauma game. The reality is that wherever you're at, you can be hurt at that level. So now I'm at this place where I'm looking at this stuff and I'm trying to figure out like, well, what do I do with this? And it's really unsettling because, you know, I, I, I as I mentioned, like I, I felt like I was in teacher mode. I had, I had so many advantages. I had done so much work. I had learned from so many masters. I got to spend three years with my grandfather, the most zen out dude in the universe, you know? Like, like, I had so much. How dare I complain? And who the fuck am I to say like, oh yeah, I'm also broken and weak. And and what does that do for my whole sense of self, my identity? And I, I have, I, and it goes, and I go back and I think about my romantic relationships for the last, you know, 15 years. And I think about how I put myself in this place of authority. And throughout multiple relationships for many years, I had this air of I felt like I was better. And I felt like I am sophisticated in my emotional intelligence and I am putting up with your shit, which I can do because I am evolved in that way. And what I can see now is that may have been true, but the opposite is also true. That every person that I've ever been close to has had to put up with my shit. That makes so much sense intellectually, of course, of course. Every relationship is one person having to put up with the other person's shit and hopefully loving them enough to put up with their shit. But I had this story that I was better than that. And honestly, it really weighs me down in this fraud definition way. Like, wait a minute, I thought I was a coach. I thought I was a teacher. I thought I was a lecturer and speaker. How the fuck can I be so broken? How can I be so flawed? How can I be so weak? And still think I have something to teach? To which I go back to where I started, which is I am broken and I am magnificent. I had a beautiful talk with my brother the other day and we were talking through these things and it was really powerful. And we talked about how I'm trying to talk about these things without any specifics about our family, but you know, like it is difficult for us to listen to someone who is not like established as master. But the more I grow and the more I learn, like there are no, I mean, there are so few like p perfect masters. Like if you're going to wait around for Jesus or Gandhi, you'll realize there's no such thing. Jesus and Gandhi were fucked up in some ways. Spoiler alert, read deep enough and you will find out that they were human too. Dalai Lama's human too. Muji is human too. Almost anybody who is a guru is human too. Does that mean they don't have things to teach you? Thank you, Osha. Fuck you, Osha. So we are all broken and magnificent. I think about 
how much I've learned from gardening. Now this leaf, it was, see this one here growing out, it's, it's fresh and brand new and, and it, as it unfolds, it's gonna be perfect. And this leaf was perfect too, for about a minute. And then it snagged something or, and it got this rip in it, now it's got this brown in it. Now, is it somehow a lesser leaf? Walk through a forest, how many leaves are perfect? All of them, but do they have no flaws? No, they're all broken and magnificent. And to fall into the trap of trying to find perfection from a definition of without flaws is to rob yourself of the beauty of life and to rob the world of the wisdom that you have to share. So I'm in a place now where I am just like cracking the surface. And I'm looking at this 13 year old boy who potentially was so hurt that he built up some fucked up shit in his brain that I'm gonna have to figure out and work with for the rest of my life. I've been working through it, I just didn't know it. Now here's the, here's the, here's the, the optimism on all that. Is that when I first kind of saw this and I shared online because that's what I do and I shared like holy shit like I have trauma like I was suicidal I may have had things happen when I was a kid that weren't perfect and and I felt like my whole sense of identity was collapsing like I don't know who I am in this place and and that just there's a, there's a lot to that story as well. But anyways, I'm like, what do I do with this new knowledge that I, I have so much work to do. I'm, I'm learning this. And then I go to I, tomorrow, I have a coaching class. I've got 20 people that are three weeks deep into a coaching program that I am teaching them. And 24 hours before that, I'm learning that I'm fucked up. That I'm clueless about certain aspects of my core identity. Who the fuck am I? And as I shared that online and I heard person after person after person talk about their journeys and their explorations of these shadows and their traumas. And I, I, I started to feel hope. And I started to feel faith. And I started to feel like, this is good. This is good. I'm broken and I'm magnificent. And if I can own that, and I can be honest with the people that I'm coaching, which I was, I said, I'm going through some, some shit. And I'm not coming at you as a perfect expert. I'm coming at you as a fellow journeyer. And if you follow the tools that I'm teaching, you may find yourself where I'm at right now, which is fuck. But you got to have faith that on the other side of it, you will have more conviction and more understanding that who you are is perfect and what you have to share is perfect. And everything that you undertake becomes part of your curriculum. So I share this because this is my truth in this moment. I share it because I have been in therapy many times over the last 20 years. I have had multiple suicidal ideations, one significant suicide attempt that uh, started me into therapy. And still, I've got a lot to share. Because like all of us, I'm broken and I'm magnificent. 
like this gorgeous plant. Broken and magnificent. So thank you for your courage and your support and your love. I, I want to give special gratitude to uh, my coaches Chrissy and Brenna, to my brother, to my mom, to my partner Becca, um, and to my men's group, my other men's group, uh, my gratitude circle, and everyone who has held me in love as I have felt weak. So thank you. I love you. <sighs> Let's have ourselves a hug. Wherever you are, give yourself a hug. Hold on to this body that you're in. And if you feel those arms around me, or you, imagine they are my arms holding you, and I will feel you holding me in this moment. We can be connected beyond the physical. Recognizing that beyond our issues and our stories, that we are so much more alike than different. And if we can let our guards down and let our stories go, we can sink into that place of unity, of shared struggle and shared triumph. So in that place of connection and oneness, let's just take one deep breath in, hold it at the top and squeeze and feel us all holding you. <sighs> On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and you gorgeous people, thank you for being a part of this hug nation. I love you. Check in a few of the comments that I've missed. Thank you, Terry, for seeing me grow. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Carol and Candace. Hey, Malcolm. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, wrap your arms around your shadow. That's a good way to say it. Malcolm saying, blessed are the cracked, for they let in the light. Kiri and Malcolm both sharing about kintsugi, which is the Japanese art of the, there's beauty because we are broken. And, you know, I, I didn't have a, a cracked pot, but I hope by sharing a plant, which is a more visceral example of that, but I, I think that's a, the same thing of like, look, if you walk through the forest and you are trying to find the perfect trees with no scrapes on their bark, no brown on their leaves, you will you will miss the majesty of a forest. Just like you will miss the majesty of humanity and you will miss the miracle of you. Carol mentioning eye movement desensitization. Interesting, I've also heard a lot of people talk about uh, EFF, so what is it, EFT, the tapping therapy, which I've never done, but um, I've been resistant to it because I'm arrogant, but I am losing my arrogance with every day. Thank you, D. That means a lot. I appreciate the, that um, I'm, I'm honored that we were able to work together and continue to work together. We are all perfectly imperfect, says Lupe. Yep. Uh, Kiri saying, just began trauma therapy sessions with a the therapist, and it is so hard. I can feel deeply in my bones how important healing it will be in the long run. Bravo for your courage. I, I know that is something that you have wanted to confront, and that you have recognized that for you to be where you want to be and to have the relationships you want to have, that it's that uh, you don't want to be held back by the same things. And I, I, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. It's just hard. It's big. 
Thank you, Ryan. That means a lot. And thank you, Isabel. <laughs> and Curious saying, Poe Buddies nerfed. Well, that's pretty clear. Oh, so we are packing right now in this household. I am. I am. It is a. It is an unsettling and weird place to to be, feeling like such a novice at fifty. You know, I've got fifteen hundred YouTube videos <laughs> about wisdom and lessons, and then I, you know wake up in the morning and be like, what the fuck? Who the fuck am I? What the fuck? Why am I so... Who the... It is a... A very... I'm trying to, to lean into the excitement. I'm trying to lean into the possibility. I'm trying to lean into... The unknown. This is all I've ever known. But what if... What if I have lived my whole life with shrapnel deep down and it has impaired my mobility? And with digging and sacrifice and pain and some blood, I might be able to remove a good portion of that shrapnel and then get full mobility and have deeper relationships and have healthier connections to people. And that seems like a worthwhile undertaking. Yeah. Well, I love you, Jeannie and Jocelyn. Thank you, Kiri. We can all be mentors. Absolutely. I mean, look, there's two types of teachers. The ones that tell you they know everything and the ones who tell you the truth. Some people need to be told that their teacher is, you know, perfect and it helps you to listen. I'm not in that category. Um, but what I'm getting better and better at is recognizing that all, all connections are teacher-student. And I admit that I have had some blind spots in that in the past. I have felt arrogant but nothing like a little soul spanking <laughs> to shake you out of that. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Moira. Thank you, Malcolm. I love you guys. Thank you for letting me share. Uh, it is healing for me to, to process these things in this way. I, I, I consider this accountability on a weekly basis to be... Um, so healing for me and I, I hope there is something in it that um, can be productive for you as well. I love you. Have a beautiful day. And if you would like to connect in a gratitude way, we are continuing to do gratitude circles three times a day at zoom.hugnation.com. 3 a.m. noon and 6 p.m. West Coast time. 3 a.m. is like noon in Europe, so wherever you are, there is a perfect time for you to join in, share gratitude, and be reminded that you are magnificent. And even if you're just silent, you can let other people share, and, and they will remind you, oh yeah, shit's awesome. Or some of the shit's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously.